Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Shay Dixon. Shay, it is Monday. That means we do Mailbag Monday today. We take questions from our subscribers. Uh, we listen to Brian Kelly talk at 12 o'clock today, and now here we are to talk about LSU some more. Yeah, it a uh, 72-10 to win over Grambling State. We... Move into a week three game with Mississippi State where they kick off at 11 a.m. And then they announce the Arkansas game the following week will be a 6 p.m. kickoff in Tiger Stadium. So head on the road to State 11 a.m. this weekend. The following weekend we'll be back in Death Valley at night, which is a good thing when you play Arkansas. That will uh, be a big time SEC home opener for them. Uh, we got a couple pages here, Matty B, and we are on our normal schedule. As you noted, uh, last week we did a Tuesday mailbag because the game was on Sunday and you were traveling back. Yep. Now we're on our normal Monday uh, <laughs> podcast where it will be Mailbag Monday. So every week during the football season, check it out. It will be uh, available for you on YouTube and wherever you uh, stream your podcasts. Yep. Ready? Get it rolling? I'm ready. Very ready. All right. Uh Tariff, I'm assuming T E R E I F is the user's name. Is Tarif maybe? Um, maybe. I don't know. Tough for yeah, me to yeah. guess there. He'll he'll correct me or she will correct me uh, when we say it wrong on the podcast and they can chime in on the board and tell us for next time. Uh, but I'll go with Tarif. Uh, very short and to the point. Omar Spates update. Okay, Maddie B. So Omar Spates, LSU starting linebacker, uh, was banged up, came off the field. And didn't even have pads on for the rest of the game after he came out. Brian Kelly listed only two people on the injury report this week as probable, one being Mason Taylor at tight end, the other one being Spates. So probable for this weekend is what it sounds like, which I take to mean nothing too serious. We'll have to give it time as Brian Kelly does these injury updates each week because sometimes he leaves guys off and then they're not playing or whatever it might be. But so far through two weeks, probable has mean you've played. I don't think anybody's been listed as probable that didn't play. Yeah. Um, and I think there was, you know, uh, talk of Mason Taylor, obviously at tight end, but he's fine. Uh, had a little ankle, uh, tweaked his ankle, but um, they said he would have been fine to go back in on Saturday. So, um, yeah, Omar Spates, I, I didn't see a specific play, I don't think, off the top of my head. I do remember when I rewatched the game today, I said, is he is he kind of limping at one point? But um, overall, I didn't see anything too serious, so we'll see. You would think with, obviously, SEC play starting Mississippi State on the road, uh, you at least, you know, get him, get him out there, get the juices flowing to, to give him a shot to play. Uh, T. Castine, uh, gosh, and this is what happens when we have a board full of uh, a lot of French uh, heritage people <laughs> that I'm going to guess this is Castine, but uh, yeah. C-A-S-T-E-I-N-E. E-I-G-N-E, Castine, Castigny, Castine is what I'm going with. I'll lean French. Um, What grade would you give each on-field coach for their time in Baton Rouge taking into account on-field development slash success in recruiting? That would be a whole podcast on its own or just like the deepest in-depth writing we could do. I will, that would take all day. And I'd have to really actually think of like really, really think about that and go looking at things. I can't just. I can't just throw out grades. Let's do it this way. Um, through Brian Kelly's tenure, who are two or three coaches that you think combo recruiting and on-field wise are very good coaches? I, I don't want to take – well, I'm, I'm not going to say obvious one because we'll see. Um, I, I think Brad Davis is really good. I, I, I'll go Brad Davis is probably one of my top guys um, both ways recruiting and development wise. I uh, I like that. I, I think Frank Wilson's obviously the best recruiter on staff and yeah. running backs – they're a running back room. If you coach them up well enough, we'll do what they've got to do. They're deep. We'll see how that one goes as the year goes along. For a young coach, I like Joe Sloan. I, you can say what you want. I do think Jaden Daniels made a big jump from where he was at Arizona State to his first year at LSU. We'll see how that continues to progress. Yeah. And I would, man, I'd be slighted not to at least put Den Brock into that group because A, he's been around a long time, so you know he's got his philosophy he's sticking to it coaching-wise. But they do have him in charge of tight ends, and in one year he added four guys to the roster, which even the lowest-ranked guy, Mark Way, is the guy who plays the most. So mm-hmm. he's rebuilt that room. Davis has rebuilt O-line. I think Frank's a great recruiter. And for a young guy, I do like Sloan, um, but I'm not trying to take anything away from everybody else. That would just be my – Few guys that jump to mind there. Anyone else, Matty B? You good? Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, the defensive line obviously is 
been in flux for so long sure. and we, we'll see i hope uh obviously Lindsay continues to recover um you know we'll see uh how the linebackers develop under matt house uh safety position with coach um cooks uh is going to be interesting because they do have new guys like toviano and whatnot and then um yeah cornerback room with steeples is has been it, it's a that steeples has had the hardest time because he, I mean, that's just an impossible situation to be in. And obviously, we love what he's done with the 24 class so far as well. Yeah. No, boy, Steeples is up against it when in year one, you have to go all transfers. In year two, you only get one returning scholarship cornerback back, and you've got to go all transfers again. They do have a very nice cornerback recruiting class, though. So yeah. we'll see. I think this is one we could also revisit after this year. And For sure. then we'll see who's still on staff. Who do they kind of maybe does it shuffle up any after two years. I think you can start to look a little bit deeper into that. Uh, I can get this one, even though it says Gumbo E uh, A U X uh, Nola Gumbo 41. <clears throat> Jaden Daniels seemed to look to throw down the field more. Do you think that continues to grow uh, going forward or was this a case of the opponent we played and him just being a little bit more comfortable to throw the downfield passes? Maddie B you do most of our film studies, so I'll let you chime in, but I would guess it's got to be a combination of both, right? Like they want to push him to do more and you're playing an inferior opponent. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a combination of both. I mean, Chris Hilton wide open down the middle of the field, made a great throw to him, but you know, wide open down the middle when the safety dropped down then Brian Thomas jr. Uh, on the opening touchdown on a clear bust in coverage where he's wide open in the end zone. So I mean, he's going to throw the ball downfield more. I thought his patience and his poise, like I said in the postgame podcast, the patience and the poise in the pocket was what stood out to me more than anything else. Um, we talk about him throwing down the field, but um, I, and I've gotten on him before about maybe holding on to the ball too long, but with against Grambling State, the way he was able to read the field, you know, he wasn't in a rush, didn't look to run uh, as much and just delivered the ball. So I thought he was pretty good. We uh, famous Amos said, uh, I know Shelton Sampson, true freshman, had those two touchdown drops, but he looked smooth and athletic. Is it fair to say that he got some separation at will? Yeah, and he was playing in the second half, so even Grambling's backups were in at that point, so he absolutely yeah. should be getting separation at will. He is a very, very promising young player. Boy, that doesn't sting, Matty B, because he was knocking, or is, knocking on the door for playing time. <clears throat> we get to see our first glimpse of him and Nuss hit him. Once in stride, which if he would have caught it, he would have kept running and nobody would have caught him. And the other time he hit him in the end zone on a great ball to the pylon and a little, I guess that one was a tougher catch than the first one, but he didn't catch either of them. So yes, I think he got separation at will. Yes, I do think he's very smooth and athletic and he's got size, which is why he's gotten onto the field the most out of all these true freshman receivers. But Matty B, in your mind, and we talked about this after the game, does this sort of put the pause on Shelton Sampson as you enter SEC play and think, okay, you dropped two touchdowns when we were winning by 60. No big deal. They're not putting you out there. If you're dropping that ball as a true freshman, if you're in a one score game against an SEC team, I wouldn't think. I Yeah, I wouldn't think so either. Uh, coming in to this year, we, if you asked us, which of the best, which of the freshmen had the best hands, we would have said Kyle Parker probably. Um, we, I, I let me speak for myself. I was high on Brown and Sampson, but in I didn't think they were as polished or as physically ready as they you know needed to be. Which isn't a slight to them; they're freshmen. No, you know, very few freshmen are. But um, yeah, it's you know nerves first game. He's going to be a great receiver. Um, all both of those guys are going to be great receivers. So I I don't take too much from that. But as far as the immediate goes, I think they're just from what I saw from Hilton and Sampson. I'm I like them, uh, but ultimately this year comes down to Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, and Kyron Lacey. Whether we whether you like it or not, those are the three guys that are going to determine how good the receiving core is. Hilton is a big play guy. We know what he is. Samson's young. You know, doesn't look like Ibiet is going to get out there for a ton. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll see as it goes on. Boy, you wish if Shelton would have caught those balls, all of a sudden I think it would have been like, okay, let's see more. See what else yeah. he's got. Exactly. I think state this weekend, we've got a good feel for the starters will play. And then you get into the kind of Aaron Anderson, Kyron Lacey have switched up as starters, but Chris Hilton more, and that might be your five. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Fournette is Omar Spates uh, going to be the second heralded transfer linebacker that ends up slipping, slipping into the, into oblivion. He said into the oblivion, into oblivion. Uh, or do you think he turns it around? Okay. Um, 
they brought Mike Jones in. That's the other he's referencing in uh, from Clemson. He'd kind of swap positions. Omar Spates is at least a true middle linebacker. Matty Beat's only been two weeks, but he's not stuffed the stat sheet in any big way. Typically, middle linebackers do. I think this is probably brought on a little bit, too, by Greg Penn and the Weeks brothers all looked capable. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Thoughts there on Omar Spates. We're talking about a guy who, against Grambling State, made his 41st career start. Uh, obviously, the others all came at Oregon State, but now with two games at LSU, he's over 40 career starts. So I can't see that type of production going on to the bench unless it just continues for like a month. Yeah, I I don't see it happening. This is a big week for everybody on the defense, obviously, but especially I think the linebackers and how they use linebackers, but then Omar Spates in particular to where um, he's going to have to stop the run game in a, in a bit in a better way than what I think he did against Grambling and uh, even Florida State to a degree. Uh, so that's this is the week where I'm really going to be evaluating Omar Spates. Not saying you can't evaluate him through two weeks, but this is a big week for me uh, to see if he's really able to make the impact that I thought he was going to be able to make. If, if he doesn't end up being a, a really good player for this defense, then I, I was wrong coming into the year. I still believe in him though. Okay, so we're still riding with Omar for right now. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Like you said, states are very. This is not the state uh, that Mike Leach, RIP, no. um, and the air raid brought. They run the football a lot. They've got the leading rusher in the SEC right now, and they have Will Rogers sort of pick his spots, as Brian Kelly said in the passing game. Only attempted 17 passes in an overtime win over Arizona. So linebackers will be tested this week. Uh, Hunter also said um, that Carter brought up the name Bash Bros for the Weeks brothers. You vibing with it or nah? I'm just I'm I'm straight off the dome here with this. I like uh, like a week's world more, maybe a little play on Wayne's <laughs> world. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, West Weeks, who is in his third year of college, um, but I believe he's a redshirt sophomore, he's junior, and yeah. then Whit Weeks, who's a true freshman, uh, both got a lot of run in the second half at linebacker. The two middle linebackers together, they looked solid. Their very first play, they were in together. They were in on the tackle, um, and it's kind of funny we. I thought West Weeks looked good as a backup last year, and he was a very solid special teams player. Whit Weeks is a very highly rated. I mean, he was borderline top 100, top 10 linebacker in the country, and on three, we knew he was going to be very good. It's grambling, yes, but I thought West Weeks looked good. Like, I I would be playing both those guys uh, off the bench if I'm LSU. I agree, especially if, if Perkins is moving around uh, – I liked what I saw from Penn and both weeks brothers. So, you know, if I figure out Omar Spates and get him comfortable, I, this is a, a linebacker room that's good and um, you has the potential to be dynamic depending on how Perkins plays. Okay. You didn't vote the bash bros. Oh. Are, you, are you yay? Are you rocking with it or vibing with it or nah? Those are your I, options. I like it. I like You're it. You're vibing. That's cool. I, I need to. Yeah. I like it. Uh, Bourbon and Cheerios. Who's obviously a uh, first time, uh, ask her here with uh, only three but that's a good thing uh lsu has one sack through two games how do they fix that boy did i not see that one coming and yes grambling state maddie b what did they, they kind of used a quick passing game they didn't really yeah. they didn't even attempt to say hey let's just sit back here and actually try to throw because they knew they were going to hold up offensive line versus that lsu defensive front let alone if perkins or any of those guys are coming but yeah against a very experienced florida state team granted they were in position for some sacks and just didn't get them. And that was kind of more credit maybe to what Florida state has at quarterback and mm -hmm. his ability to escape it and keep plays alive. They, I want to see Mason Smith back. And then I would like to see what Perkins really does settling into what now Kelly's calling a hybrid role where he's going to play linebacker and play edge rusher. Uh, that number has got to go up though. I, they have too many weapons there for that number not to be up. Yeah, well, the funny thing is, like like you said, Mississippi State's not going to give them a ton of opportunities. So we could be talking about through three games, maybe one sack. Um, and Jordan Travis, obviously mobile, very good quarterback, had advantages on the outside, whatnot. Uh, Crawley, the quarterback at Grambling, I thought escaped really well, moved really well. I thought he was a played a great game for Grambling over there. Uh, hit a couple guys in stride on the move. So. Um, but a lot of quarterbacks nowadays are mobile, and so contain needs to be a priority. Uh, getting there needs to be a priority. I thought Mason Smith – I don't know if we have any Mason Smith questions on here. We probably do, but 
I wrote a story on the five players, you know, pushing for uh, playing time or making their debut, whatever you want to call it. And when I went back and watched Mason Smith, I was actually quite impressed by like his overall movement. Now he wasn't as strong maybe as I, I want him to be, or I remember him being, but he's still an incredibly dynamic player. And so I, I feel good about the defensive line in general still. It's just, you know, two games, two mobile quarterbacks got outside the pocket. It's just not great, but it's not going to kill this defense against Mississippi State. The um, Bourbon Chair is asked next about Logan Diggs, Notre Dame transfer. He saw his first LSU action, uh, 15 carries, 115 yards, a touchdown. That's 7.7 yards a carry. And he also caught a pass for 18 yards. That was his only target. So, Excellent game out of the gates for him. He says, is there any reason he, he should not get at least 20 touches per game moving forward? What I'll say about that is I uh, understand viewing Logan is in a, you look, you don't go out and get someone when you have seven, six, seven running backs on roster from the portal. If you don't think you still need an extra boost. So I do yeah. think that Logan brings a lot to that room should certainly get maybe the most touches of anyone uh, in that running back room. But I'll also put that into perspective for you because I think that this past weekend obviously can be misleading when you have 82 snaps. That's not the norm. So Florida State game is a better uh, way to view it, at least in, through a, kind of that lens uh, in terms of total plays. Florida State had 66, LSU had 64. 20 touches would mean you're touching the ball on more a third or basically more than a third of your offensive snaps. That's not going to happen. So... I do think he should be at double digit touches each game, but 20 would 20 is not happening. 20, 20 is not happening. Um, if the LSU running backs in uh, together combined for 20 carries, I think that would be they had uh, 12 the first game. They had 12 the first game, and uh, obviously, we're not successful. So, a lot of that hinges on how successful they can be as well. Uh, I, I've said it before, I've said it the past six months, or I've said it since Logan Diggs committed to LSU. I think he's the most talented back. He was the most productive back last year. He is the best back on the roster right now. Obviously, maybe I'm not going to say the most talented. I think Caleb uh, Jackson is is in that conversation too. But he's just – he's he's really, really good. And so I think he should be running back one, and I've said that for about four months now. So There you go. I um no reason to disagree after seeing this past weekend. Uh, his throwaway question here, what plants are in Shay's flower bed? A sensitive subject here. Uh, my wife's been um, – pushing hard and is losing patience on my uh me addressing our flower bed issues or uh our lack of flower bed issues i should say and i'm punning it because it's just been so hot that anything we'd have out there would die if i weren't watering it every day and i am not on top of it enough to water it every day i have not even beefed it up so if anyone has um a green thumb and some landscaping uh advice or suggestions <laughs> uh, i'll post a picture of the board and y'all can go to town and you can even come over and help me plan it all maddie b there you, you, go. Roost, you can come over and do it there you go um yeah listening to uh you know i think shay and billy well billy especially can go on about his uh his backyard and i've been married a lot longer than billy um a significant number of years longer so billy still do it when his wife asks he does it immediately yeah. i uh i'm in the nearing a decade i don't i'm not right on top of it so i bet billy's yard's looking nice real yeah. nice there you doubt go. doubt it's uh for lack of upkeep he's always out there <laughs> doing something uh tiger king 53 true or false lance Hurd and denver harris start versus mississippi state okay so we do know the answer to this if we believe brian kelly Denver Harris did start at corner this past weekend, and Brian Kelly even said, hey, look, Denver had his helmet ripped off. They were holding him, and he never reacted. And he was like, yeah. that was good. We like that. And he also thought that he saw more buy-in from a kid who is a really a press corner that is now learning to play a variety of kind of different techniques uh, cornerback-wise, which is what LSU requires. But he said that he's very eager to learn. So I would believe that you could say Harris would start, the plan for Zaylance Hurd, for Lance Hurd, according to Kelly, is same as Grambling. Miles Frazier gets the first reps by the second series or third series. Lance Hurd's in at right tackle. Emory Jones goes to right guard. Frazier comes off. So, Matty B, what we thought we would see is taken three games or two games, really, Grambling State, and now three games where they are full on ready to see if they can't get Hurd in the starting lineup at some point. Yeah. Um, 
I, I, I think there's not much to add on the on the herd front. I think we all saw it. I think we all see it. Very, very talented. The question is obviously I think they want to work him in slowly when it comes to SEC play because he didn't get those, you know, a ton of reps against Florida State. So it's like, all right, Mississippi State, put him out there for a series, see how he does. Put him out there for another series, see how he does, and then you go from there moving forward. The Denver Harris one is obviously interesting. I, I'm happy that he said, look, he was a press corner uh, in high school, uh, first of all, and then obviously at Texas A&M. Like anybody who watched his tape understood what he was last year and in high school and can understand why it took him through the fall, spring and fall. There were challenges, clearly, in learning zone coverages, in learning, you know, bail, all the different types of coverages you have to have. You're not just asked to go out there and just go press cover and lock up wide receiver one or two. Like, it's a different world. And so I, I think people didn't really understand that. So they heard, obviously, he was on third team for, for different reasons, too. But all the 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 talk in fall camping like oh he's actually not that good you know oh he's 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 not that good there's a reason he's on the third team stuff like that i always thought that was kind of ridiculous um and i think from a skill perspective he is incredibly talented um but like brian kelly said talent is only you know a small part of being really good so he's learning he's growing he's the best cornerback on this team in my opinion and we'll see if lsu can um unlock him you're muted. Brave Swisha asked if we could throw out our SEC West power rankings here. <laughs> um, it's a little wild, right? I mean, it's gone from Ole Miss with a backup quarter or playing a backup quarterback at Tulane was losing at halftime. They win that game. State, as we said, had to go to overtime uh, with Arizona and Arizona threw four picks in that game. Um, Arkansas is 2 0, but they didn't blow out Kent State. That game was close at halftime. Oof. LSU's lost, Bama's lost, AM's lost. And if I am missing a seventh team in there, it would be who'd I skip over? Auburn. Auburn. Auburn and Auburn <laughs> got taken to the wire by Cal. And I don't think Auburn's that good. Hey, anyway. Cal, Cal's a Cal's dynamic. Watch out for Cal. They beat up. I'm on the Cal over. And Auburn's trying to ruin things for me for this season. Uh Cal's not a bad team. I don't think Auburn's a great team, though. So yeah. no. My power rankings would be Bama, yeah. LSU, AM, Ole Miss. And now I've got State, Auburn, and Arkansas. And Arkansas. Uh, I'll go State, Arkansas, Auburn. Hmm. You know, Ole Miss winning that game, even though Tulane was on its backup quarterback, was was pretty. Now it wasn't easy; it was very challenging. But I, no. I do think Ole Miss winning that game is is fairly impressive. So I'd probably have them third, and M fourth, um, and then something like, yeah, I mean, you can put the last three in any order you want between Arkansas, Mississippi State, and uh, who's the other one I'm missing? Arkansas, Mississippi State, and. Uh... Oh, oh, man, we're bad at – we should just have all seven teams sitting out here. Auburn. Uh, Auburn. Auburn. Um, yeah, I'd put Mississippi State probably last. Honestly, I, I don't know. We'll Ooh. see this weekend. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Auburn sixth, Arkansas five, something like that. Yeah, so. I think I think State's better than Auburn, but, look, we're down at the bottom of the SEC at that point. That I think that pretty much looks like what everyone had going into the season, so I'm not going to let a couple of weeks derail me. In fact – between FSU, Texas, I won't say necessarily Miami, but they would have beaten anybody in the SEC West if they would have played those kind of games. And yeah. certainly Miami, too. Miami played a very nice game against Texas yeah. A&M. So if they turn out that kind of effort, I think the West is open enough to where all those teams may have yeah. lost hey, an early game. I'll, I'll say real quick is even if the SEC West is down, if LSU wins the SEC West back-to-back -back years, it don't matter if the SEC is quote-unquote down. Go win the SEC West twice. It, that's a big, big deal. Uh, opinion on Alabama and Georgia so far. Um, it's still so early. I think that Bama has some O-line issues. They've got to work through, obviously, yeah. Middle Rose, not what they're used to at quarterback and when you're coming off the years of Bryce and Tua to Bryce to uh, yeah, to now a guy like Milrow is kind of a – and then you had Mack in there. So it's kind of a funky transition period for him almost in a way. 
but they've got so much talent that they'll figure it out there. They'll be fine. Uh, Georgia, the same. I mean, Georgia's just going – they're they're going up against such an easy schedule that it really doesn't matter what they look like week in and week out. They'll be in Atlanta. And they'll be in the playoffs. That's ultimately – as long as they don't slip, that's what they're playing for and uh, are kind of on cruise control almost. Yeah. Um, Silver Moon, uh, this is a good question. Mississippi State has not allowed 100 yards rushing in either game. Uh, they forced six turnovers. They held their first two opponents to nine of 28 on third downs. Uh, this might be a better coach defense in FSU, even if it's not as talented as FSU is, certainly not on the D-line. So who are the three players on LSU's offense that have to step up to win? I'll let you go first, and I'll pick one. I, yeah, I, I think that's a great point. That's what I'm going to be interested in this week when I go and watch Mississippi State film is how good – I mean, defensively, we knew they were going to be – Zach Arnett's your, your head coach. Like the, He's a good defensive coordinator, and he's a good um, defensive coach. So, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a real – battle for lsu i don't think there's no games on the sec schedule i look at it and it's going to be 20 point win uh now they might win by 20 but i'm not going to look at it that way three players that have to step up three players that have to step up charles turner one um aaron anderson two and you know even though I mean, the other two receivers, you could put either one there, Brian Thomas or Kyron Lacey. I'll go Brian Thomas because even though he has like 320 yards or whatever it is right now, I, I want to see him. There, you know, when you watch a great receiver, you kind of know you're watching a great receiver. I've never felt that way about Brian Thomas. So we, we, I'm interested to see him take that step and in SEC play prove to me that he is an actual, you know, elite second elite receiver on this team. You didn't choose any of mine, but I'm going to choose the three easy ones. Um, if you're going to start off SEC play 1-0 and and you're going to do it against a very d- good defense, your QB1, your wide receiver 1, and your RB1 need to all play well. So yep. Jane Daniels, Logan Diggs, and Malik Neighbors, you can't have a bad game from one of those guys and expect to like blow out a team like State. It's just not going to work. So I will rock with the guys who – if we're at least basing it off of how Logan Diggs did, Logan did, did against Grambling State, that he would be the starting running back. So yeah. I will rock with those three. Uh, Nola fan 33, did you make anything out of Caleb Jackson getting snaps before Noah Kane? Should we expect him to be part of a rotation or was it, we know what we have with Kane, let's see Jackson type of thing. I don't recall seeing Trey Bradford after he got first snaps last week. Uh, Noah Kane got the game ball too, because he only got carries in the fourth yeah. quarter, fifth year senior Brian Kelly said it. He said, look, he Sat there, cheered on his teammates, and we didn't give him the ball. He's a guy who started for them last year and had to wait till the fourth quarter of a blowout for everybody else to play. I think it's exactly what he said. I think yeah. they wanted to see what they had in Caleb Jackson, so this was the game to do it. Exactly. So, I, yeah, I'm not putting too much stock in I still – I love Caleb Jackson. Y'all y'all know I love Caleb Jackson. Um, I still don't think they fully trust him going into SEC games at this moment which y'all can argue amongst yourselves if that's fair or not. But uh, we've heard Brian Kelly talk about it at length over the past month. And um, yeah, we'll see if maybe he gets a few snaps here and there. I'm not totally, I mean, I was right against Florida state when I said he wasn't going to steal the field as a running back. So we'll see, maybe he gets a couple of this game, but I, I think Kane, Emery, Diggs, Williams, those are the four backs they trust. Those are the four backs that can get the carries. And then Br- yeah. maybe Bradford shows up again. Who knows? And he uh, followed it up and said, definitely appears Denver Harris was suspended for the FSU game. The first week he's actually back, he's in the starting lineup. Do you think that was the plan just to start him when he was available or a reaction to Florida State? Probably a mix. He didn't even travel to FSU. So you can say suspended or you can just doesn't matter. He didn't go. And it's yeah. very clear that Brian Kelly has challenged him to say either meet the standards or don't. And he didn't travel to that game because he was probably not meeting the standards. And now I think. Yes, a little of reaction, but also he's your most talented corner. Like you have to put him out there and see what he can do. And now they're starting to do just that. So we'll see if he's not back in the starting lineup against Mississippi State. Um, we'll get one more in here before we uh, do a little bird dog. So, uh, Tiger yeah. Mike, do you see any packages of Kamori and Pimpton, their freshman tight end, being used in the red zone? He's 6'6", 240 something. He said, with his height and athleticism, seems like a no brainer. I know it's easy to just kind of like draw that up in your mind. I think 
they probably have so many red zone looks that I'm not sure how often we see it. Like he played 20 snaps, let's say this weekend, he got the ball one time and he looked floored when he got it. And get, like, he didn't even realize it was going to be there and he got a yard. Um, yeah. I don't think, I'm not saying this is a bust potential or anything. No, no, I'm no, just no. kind of joking that no. if Mason Taylor's healthy, he's out there. So unless they're using two tight ends and they're throwing Pimpton out, he's not going to pull anybody. So it's going to be very odd. He's catching it or be receiving targets. So maybe, but then again, when they get into the red zone, they like to run the football, Matty B. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, this is the same exact situation with Caleb Jackson, pretty much. And it will be, it is for every single fan base across the country. We have visions of what a player is as a freshman and say, okay, that guy can help us immediately. And that guy, uh, his skill set clearly can come do X, Y, and Z. Look, if Kamorian Pimpton did not, did not have a touchdown catch against Grambling State, I don't think he's going to have a touchdown catch against Mississippi State. I don't think he's going to have a touchdown catch against Arkansas the following week. Like it's, and this isn't again. This isn't a slide. This isn't to say he's a bust, but it, th- there is a big difference between what a player can do theoretically to what they can do on the field as a true freshman. And Pimpton didn't even have spring ball. Like it's just, I I I'm partly victim to of it too. I think I said he was going to have like three, four touchdown catches this year. Three cut touchdown catches this year. Like that's pro- that's not happening. That's just not happening. We'd have to see a big increase in usage, obviously. They went to the red zone eight times. I'm not sure he was ever in a package down there. I'd have to rewatch the very end of the game. But yeah. if they were, if they really wanted to lean on that as some weapon, they would have tried it in this game, yeah, and exactly. we didn't see it. Exactly. Um, let's give a shout-out real quick. Uh, our sponsor for to, uh, the Mailbag Podcast uh, is Bird Dogs. Um, and if you guys – we had a thread blow up on the board. A lot of people have jumped on this. Uh, they're really liking their Bird Dogs purchases. Um, a lot of people said the pants were big for them. A lot of people like the sh- uh, the shorts, which we both got a couple pair, Matty B. I don't know if you've been wearing them, but – I have. Thoughts? I love them. Um, very – um, they're Matthew, functional. take the wheel on the ad read. My man's loving his bird dogs. <laughs> functional, comfortable, everything. Uh, yeah, wear them either. I usually wear them like somewhat casually. I wore them to the press conference. I think the Brian Kelly press conference on Thursday because uh, they're they're nice looking. As I would have well. never known. It was a classy look. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then you could also wear them if I want to, like, you know, go play tennis or basketball or whatever in them. So versatile. Yes. Okay. So Bird Dogs uses this uh, anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you dry all day long. It actually really does work. I've said this before many times on the podcast. I've been out in the yard working, obviously not on my flower beds, uh, other things in the yard, like cutting the grass and dragging stuff to the street. And uh, it was a, is a brutally hot summer. And for some reason, that stuff works so well that my shirts would be soaked and my pants would still be dry. So very good pants, very good shorts. We're behind them. Uh, and here's what we have for you. Birddogs.com slash tigers. And you can get a free hydro flask style water bottle. Or if you pick something out, just go to check out and you can put in the promo code tigers. That's T-I-G-E-R-S, obviously. And they will throw in the free hydro flask style water bottle with the order. So birddogs.com slash tigers, or just use the promo code tigers at checkout, whatever you buy make sure that you get the free uh, free water bottle with it. So appreciate everybody for uh, supporting Bird Dogs so far. I'm glad that everyone's liking their purchases, and uh, we will keep rolling with the mailbag here. Yep. Towson Tiger, any word on how the visits from the basketball recruits went? Yes, we actually did just put up a story on the Bengal Tiger uh, about women's basketball and men's. So Billy and I will have a recruiting pod this week. I'll get Billy to dive into some of that because he worked the men's stuff. But Maddie B's also got some uh, Kim Mulkey hoops updates. And when, when it comes to Kim Mulkey teaser, these girls are ranked like the number one recruit, the number two recruit. So they they don't mess around with anybody that's not the best players in the country yeah. at the high school level. Uh, and a little side spoiler for, and uh, we'll talk more recruiting stuff later, but Matty B's got his ear to the ground. Everybody who's said that after Michaela Williams showed up from uh three on three ball, that this girl is everything that they thought she was and some. So yeah. a lot of talent. Yes. More talented, right, Maddie B, probably, than the team they had last year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Michaela Williams, Anissa Morrow, Haley Van Lith, Angel Reese. Star-studded lineup. Star, star-studded lineup. So, I can't wait. For for women's basketball, and then, you know, I think the men's basketball team will also be better than what it was last year. Um, definitely. Well, yeah, I bet so, too. 
we'll, we'll see how the recruiting the, I've said it before this 2024 class for men's basketball is the one and they, they know it. Everybody knows it and they are putting in the legwork. Uh, like you said, Billy put up a piece, uh, but we, yeah, we've been all over it. I think over the past two months on this recruiting class. Yeah. And the good thing with McMahon, Scott Woodward talked about this, uh, this off season, but the good thing for McMahon and this team is that the NCAA investigation all that is done like yeah. the findings are out you're not on a postseason ban you're not on all these things that kids who are being recruited might say well i'm coming there and i don't even know what your ncaa penalties are that's a big risk for me understandably so woodward said he's treating as an ad this year as year one for mcmahon he called last year kind of year zero as they waited to get out under the cloud of uh, ncaa investigation so as maddie b said if this is year one then you're 2024 class is really your first true recruiting class where you can get out there and make your pitch and not have to answer questions about the NCAA. So good thing there. I'll get Billy to talk about more uh, basketball sure. stuff on the recruiting pod this week. I'll make sure to write that down. Uh, Mr. Virgo 910, does Caleb Jackson get playing time in SEC play? I do think he'll play. I just don't think he'll be like, I think people should, if he gets four or five, six touches a game, that's a good start for a true freshman in a backfield that has eight guys and is using like four of them a game. I agree. Four, five, six carries a game, a game would be awesome. Would be huge. Um, I don't think he gets that against Mississippi State, but Arkansas maybe, and you just kind of go from there, work your way up. Three carries, a four carries, a five carries. You know, I, I think he will get some some carries in SC play, but I do not think he will be in the top two or three of carries on the team. Uh, do you feel Jaden Daniels, if he struggles in SEC play, do they go to the Nuss bus, Garrett Nussmeyer, or do you think they just ride Jaden the whole way? Um, I've said this before the season because you can, I can point to exact examples. If it's a year ago where Jaden's a little banged up against Arkansas and he's not playing well and you're not moving the ball, they're putting Nussmeyer in this year. They weren't last year because Nuss was still a little bit green. You didn't know had him out there like games, so – if Jaden struggles, like we saw in a couple of games last year, they will 100% put Nussmeyer in the game. I, I agree. I, and I think last year was very much a, we don't know what we have with Nuss. And at the very least, which I've said before, is Jaden gives you a floor that should be able to win you, you know, games. Now, you don't want to be in those type of games this year. You shouldn't have to be in those type of games. And if Jaden struggles, which... I think he's better this year than last year, but if he does have those type of games against Auburn and Arkansas, you know, whatever, then I 100% think they should put Nussmeyer in for a few series or the rest of the game. If it's halftime or the end of the third quarter, whatever it is, you need him. And I think Nussmeyer has shown credit to him. He has shown time after time after time that he's ready when his number is called. Like yep. that is something that we I haven't we haven't talked about with Nussmeyer enough is he hasn't really now the Southern game last year was the wake up call for him he came in wasn't ready threw the ball around awful since that point every time he's come in whether it's by design or not by design he's been ready Georgia Purdue Grambling um, I just think that you you see him be prepared in a way that you you're excited to put him in. I'm just ready for when Nuss plays and then uh, we get the pitchfork folks with coming out with a fake conspiracy of like, oh, they they run different plays and packages when Nuss is in the game. Well, yeah, I'd hope so. They're so far from the same quarterback that I do not want to see Nussmeyer running Jaden Daniels, play, but nor do I want to see Jaden running Nusses. So I uh, will see. I think there'll be a time when Nuss plays this year. And again, Jaden's off to a fine start. So yeah. save this debate for another day. Um Utah Tiger Esquire. Well, I always just say ESQ. Um, how much of our defensive issues are schematic and how much is personnel? Brian Kelly basically broke it down, Maddie B. Today, let me make sure I'm using all his terminologies correctly. It was tackling, it was technique, and it was one other thing that he said of kind of hampered them. So, or something like that. I don't know. It, it, it almost just sounds like he thinks that right now, like, no, I'm not putting it all on coaching. No, I'm not putting it all on talent. I'm putting it on technique. They need to tackle and they need to make sure that their understanding of the positions they have to be in and not missing assignments. I mean, Remember game one, he said there are guys out there that were trying to do like three people's jobs. Like do your job and focus in on it and we'll be good. Yeah. Um, I think it's both. And also I don't feel like I have enough of a sample size to really 
break it down because Florida State was such a bad matchup in that I don't think there's anything House could have done really. I mean, we've talked about what House maybe could have tried, but I don't know if it would have changed the outcome of the game drastically. So um, it's it's an interesting situation because now we're in SEC play, and I think this week and next week, Mississippi State, Arkansas are huge, not just because you want to obviously should win the games, but to figure out what exactly we're going to get from Matt House this year and what's different from last year. Yeah, I think it's – and look, this is this happens with teams. Um, it's, this is almost not as bad, but, I mean, Dave Aranda made the comment that after they lost to Texas State that he was like, well, we saw some of this coming. Like in fall camp, our receivers couldn't even get lined up correctly. And it's not like they run the air raid or some Bryles offense or whatever. I mean, it's pretty straightforward uh, with what Grimes and them do. So some of this, I think, is just technique. Like Brian Kelly said, at corner in the first game, they had guys playing – the wrong leverage. And it was like, this yeah. isn't talent. This is you just not paying attention to how the guys are lined up and whether you should be inside leverage or, you know, whatever it is. And uh, he harped on that again this past week. So clearly I think he sees it as before I even address a talent issue or a disparity, uh, we've got to address all these other uh, technique and fundamentals uh, issues of the game. So tackling this week, boy, if they don't tackle, they will get exposed by a team like state that runs the football like they do. So we will know a lot more come Saturday on that front. Uh, LWT asked, how wide open do we think the SEC really is? Wide open, but I don't only think four teams can really compete. Ole Miss, Matty B like, so he pushed him up there, that top group, A&M, LSU, Bama. Like if one of those four teams won the SEC, I'd be shocked. If one of those four teams did not win the SEC, I'd be shocked. SEC West. SEC West, I'm sorry, yes. That's okay. Um, yeah, I just I, I threw Ole Miss up there just because – you know, sure. Okay. So if, on the road, whatever. Is it open? Yes. But the only people with the key are like the top four teams. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's that open, I guess, but it's open among those teams. I do believe that. Uh, Iowa city tiger fan. Uh, LSU was in a tough position for week one, a big game with lots of eyeballs. Sometimes you have to trust experience in a game like that. And it didn't work out. Heard passed up has heard passed up Jones. Uh, oh, Hurd has passed up Jones. Jones has passed up Frazier. My bet, DJ Chester will be the starting center by Bama. And I think that the Weeks brothers will be starting at linebacker then too. Okay, let's unpack I, that. I disagree with everything he just said. At the end there. I don't think Chester starts. Even though it's a trendy freaking pick. It's a trendy pick. I understand it. Well, But it's not a popular one right now. It's really no one said anything about DJ Chester except Brian Kelly, who's been no, like, no, yes. oh yeah, we're watching Hurd, but I'm also watching Chester. So... I don't think – I would be shocked if Chester passed up not only Charles Turner, who they – again, we've talked about it at length, as they've trusted over the last two years, whether it's right or wrong, whatever. They trust him. They've gone to him. Marlon Martinez is right there too, and I'm not saying he's great. I'm not saying he's the answer. I'm not saying he's even better than Charles Turner, but DJ Chester passing up both of them in the next, what, six weeks, I don't think is happening. I'm – Pull the clip if I'm wrong, right here. DJ Chester. If they have it lined up with DJ Chester, Zalen's Heard, Emory Jones, and Will Campbell starting for them, um, it's one of the youngest, I assume, in the country. But then also, I just don't see that happening. And then the Weeks Bros starting. So I'm assuming that's the planning Omar Spates and what, Greg Penn, if they don't start Harold at, if they start Harold wherever, somewhere else. Yeah, he's probably not benching Harold in this situation. So I'm yeah, assuming it's assume Penn that. and Omar. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not rolling with that either. But I, I would like yeah. to see more of them. Yes. But I don't know about starting. Uh, we'll see. Boy. Um, and then he said, which freshman do you see beating out the player in front of them by mid to late season? You cannot use Jackson. I wasn't going to so pick Jackson. means so. Caleb. Well, Lance Hurd would be one. There you go. Um, yeah. We ha- we, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I'll go Stamps could be one. But then again, if Denver gets locked in and Zy Alexander plays well, it would be tough. So. Yeah, I'm not um, sure the the Manny B the portal and returning players when you have that combo it just makes it tough for a true freshman to start. Who and why why do we want why do LSU fans want true freshmen starting? Like I understand the talent. They want to be ready for it. the future. They're done. They're like, done by week two. They want the like I understand the talent and the oh wow something shiny's in front of us. But good, I mean let's win the games. Win Mississippi State. Win Arkansas. Win the games. Because those are that's way more important than oh wow I hope 
I hope Javian Toviano starts at corner this week or starts at safety or starts at nickel this week. Like, the, yes, they are all going to be very good players. We talked about them all at length, but I'm just like, it gets nauseating where we're like, all right, you know, where's the where's all the true freshmen? Who's starting five true freshmen across the country? That's a good team. I I don't know. There's my rant. All right, there you have good rant. You know, there's actually, and I've said this, this is going to be a consistent theme because of the portal. You already have returning players, but because of the portal, look around the country right now. Like n- almost nobody is starting true for like there's two true freshman quarterbacks that are out there making like UCLA and Arizona State, but there's not guys just like starting everywhere as true freshmen. If if anything, teams have gotten older, right? I mean, Florida State yeah. has the oldest offensive line in the country, right? Defensive line, they have a bunch of return. Like teams are getting older. They're not getting younger. Last year when they started all this true freshmen, that was <laughs> like it was a unique they were so low on numbers and it was like these guys are the best let's just get them out there and boy did they take they took some lumps if you really want to compete for the west again and do anything beyond make a citrus but like you cannot just be lumping freshmen onto the field of starters you've got to have the point is to have veterans out there so i'm riding with these other guys until we see kind of if they win or lose some games and what they kind of shuffle up from there okay so this next question it's right up my alley Rec uh, J Wex W X asked, uh, "Give us your thought on punt returns." I believe it was said after week one, and you are absolutely correct that Aaron Anderson was the guy, and that we only got to see him try one uh, return this past weekend. That doesn't make any sense. Wouldn't this have been the week to let him return every punt if Greg Clayton's back there only for fair catches? Then why is he returning some of the punts? And he actually did have a good return, and it's all just confusing to me. I'm with him, Maddie B. I have no idea what like. Brian Kelly came after game one. Before game one, he said, Aaron Anderson is our best returner. He's going to start on kick and punts. We started on kicks. He didn't start on punts. They put Greg Clayton out there. It's week one. Like, you're playing in a big game. Greg Clayton can at least catch it. Even on that play, he, like, fell backwards and still caught it somehow. But then they're like, all right, we're ready for Aaron. It's your turn now. And he fumbled the first one. Well, Brian Kelly comes out and says, no, we're not going away from Aaron Anderson. He's going to start again on both units, and he'll be the first guy out there. He didn't start on either unit, didn't even get to play until like the third quarter on punts. And even then it was a fair catch. And they're right. This game, between this and Army, I guess, probably this one and Georgia State at the end of the year, but yeah. probably this one, you're like LSU didn't punt. Grambling was punting every time after those first three drives. Like this is the one chance where you were up and him fumbling it or doing something negative wouldn't have mattered. Like I don't – what are they going to do now? Trot them out there against Mississippi State and be like, catch them all now for us and make some returns? Like, I just – I don't get it at all. And I didn't get it a year ago when they went away from Malik Neighbors, which got them into that position in the first exactly. place. Exactly what I was going to say is they did this exact same thing with – I I think I said this exact thing with last year when they didn't put Malik Neighbors against, out there against Southern. I was like, why What's? Why are we doing this? Where's, where's Malik? Like, I know he fumbled against Florida State, but he's clearly – obviously has the best hands on the team and they went away from them. So it's the same thing. And uh, I, I mean, it's, it's new def- It's a new special teams coach, quote unquote, Diaco. I mean, Brian, Kelly's I, 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 I do not get it at all. I don't get it They either. see everything in practice. So maybe we're off, but we get to watch the games and it's very evident. Greg Clayton, Clayton only plays cause he can catch it. And that's great. But I mean, that was the bailout a year ago. You were supposed to fix that issue, not just, Say, oh yeah, we're gonna do that again all year. Yeah, like Greg so. played. Greg Clayton played one snap that wasn't on special teams. Yeah, I, I, blows my mind. And I love Greg Clayton. And look, shout out Greg Clayton. Bailed Save him out him. in a major way last year, and now he's doing it again. So more power to him. He's a um, he's worked himself into a nice role. Yep. I just don't get it with Aaron Anderson. So or the decision not to play him. Uh, Coach K seven. Uh, what's your take oh, uh, after film study on tight end blocking? Uh, from my take, we're missing a lot in this area. Also got several talented freshmen, but could tell against scrambling that several are not ready. Trouble just getting aligned, missed assignments. Uh, are there any guys on this team you think can get more PT moving forward? He doesn't specify freshmen here, but he listed some other ones. Uh, Matty B, you did do a story on guys you think deserve more PT going forward, but they weren't all freshmen. Um, no, they were not. One. There was only one freshman because you there did you your freshman report, which was very good. Um, so I kind of let that, and then, uh, the only freshman I had listed was, um, it was heard. Yeah. Zayn's heard. Anyways, uh, to get to his tight end point, Connor Gilbert has been, 
not 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 the the blocker that we thought he'd be. And I'm not saying he's bad, but it hasn't been great. He was mauling kids in JUCO film. Yes, um, the Florida State film. They he didn't look quick enough. I think is the problem. But also he just kind of whiffed on a few at Florida State, and then Grambling. I think he's fine. You know, at that level. Just imagine going JUCO to then being like, oh, block Jared Verse here. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not even out of my stance and he's run by me. Now, positive, Mac Markway, I think, is is the truth. I think he's the real deal. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see more Mark Markway than, than Gilbert moving forward. We will try to speed it up here. We're yeah. about to break our record from last week's mailbag. People love the mailbag pod. They ask a lot. They love the questions. Um, Kenny Mac, 409, what do you think – uh, Attributed to the defense coming out so flat against the run after being dominant for a half against a better Florida State a week, Florida State a week before, they didn't tackle well those first three series, and yeah. Grambling made a couple plays. I mean, yeah, Brian I'm not Kelly sure said, what else to slice it other than they've just got to be more sound to start the game. Yeah, and Brian Kelly tried to put it on them coming out in the wrong package, um, which surprised me because I don't know why you'd come out in a dime package against Grambling State just. Especially after the first drive where they carve you up, they did, apparently he was like, you know, we, we fixed that after the third drive. I'm like, why did it take you three drives to fix that? But um, it wasn't wasn't promising. I, one thing I did see, which I'll be quick, um, defensive line kind of got in the backfield a little too quick. Didn't their eyes? I don't think were were great to start off. So that'll be interesting to see because against Mississippi State, I'm gonna keep hammering the ho- point home. Their eyes better be in the right spot. Yep, eye discipline. We're teaching you guys every. We're touching it all, on it all right now. Everything. I disciplined has made its way into the Bengal Tiger yes. podcast. Ryan Ortega, um, doo -doo. how serious do we expect the ankle sprain is for Mason Taylor? BK played it off in the post game today. Listed him as probable, so that's good. Uh, confidence level in our tight end room. If this keeps him off the field for any time, that's when you're going to be a little nervous because, you, as you just noted, Gilbreth is your JUCO guy, but he's still got to get adjusted to the speed of this game in the SEC, you'd be down to just Mark Way, who's played well, but then you'd be playing pimped in and who's not a blocker. And McGohan only got a handful of snaps. So yes, they're deeper at tight end, but you can't afford to lose your biggest piece. So yeah, and I don't my guess that. is Mason Taylor takes it very easy this week and we'll be ready for Mississippi state. Yeah, he'll be he'll be good to go. If now the, the the hypothetical that he doesn't play is borderline terrifying, but I think he'll be fine. Famous Amos asked, uh, "Can you look at? Did y'all take a look at how Fitzgerald West did? Could he play a viable option in the rotation? I don't think they've got so many other guys they can play. Like Guillory didn't even get a ton of snaps in this game, so there's so many other guys on that interior that they could play before you would need to turn to Fitzgerald West, in my opinion. I no, I agree. Um. Look, rotate those four, Mason Smith, Kyle Wingo, Kobe and Guillory, and Jordan Jefferson. Rotate those four, and I think you can piece together a full game pretty comfortably. When Jalen Lee has looked Jalen Lee as well. Yes. Coming in from Florida. So yes. that's another guy that would be up there. So Fitzgerald's still young. Um, Irish Tiger 18, will Lunsford, Mason Lunsford, push for starting time? Saw that he got in and gets scrambling. His body type doesn't look like that of an SEC starter. No, I think Marlon Martinez would be the guy after her that they would try to get onto the field if something happens. So unless they're having to turn to their eighth or ninth their lineman, Matty B, I don't think that he's going to play. I don't. I don't think so either. Um, part of it, I mean, it wasn't great. He missed a lot of fall camp with the injury, but um, yeah, I don't. I don't think he gets in there. Uh, someone asked about Colin Simmons coming to the game. He was not there. Uh, Jay Reyes did. Six tool player, true or false? Okay, let's go quickly here. Ah. Diggs will be RB one, and he and uh, Jackson will get the lion's share. Let's say eighty percent of the carries going forward. I'll say false because I think Josh Williams is in there, and others. Emory comes back this Emory. week. False, false, <laughs> so false. Uh, Heard will start at right tackle with Jones at right guard. Eventually true this week. False. Correct. West Weeks will start at middle linebacker. False. This week, yeah, false. I mean, I think false in general. I don't think he starts in the line. Right but he did have a very good game against Grambling, yes. and I like him. Uh, Denver Harris will start at corner, true. Yes. Perkins stays on the edge and not middle linebacker for Mississippi State. I say true. I mean, Brian Kelly kind of gave like a roundabout. Like, yeah, he was like, we're, he's hybrid now, basically. He's, 
<laughs> he's hybrid. So he was like, oh, we spent all offseason doing linebackers, so like he can play that too. But yeah, I would think that they're going to go back out with Greg Penn and Spates and then putting Perkins on the edge. I would like that. I would like that quite a bit. Especially uh, with- LSU Shad said, I watched Algiers America last week. Excellent series. Yes, it was. If you've not watched it, Algier- Algiers America is really good. Uh, features two of LSU's players, Aaron Anderson and Tyree Adams. Wondering how you think both are fitting in. Saw Anderson had some touches Saturday. I do think Anderson will work his way into a role at receiver, especially stuff around the line of scrimmage where you can kind of just get on the ball and let him go. And that's a good thing. Um, Tyree Adams won't play this year, but I've had more than one person that watches every practice say that he has looked really solid as a backup left tackle behind Will Campbell. So I think they do like what they're getting out of those uh, two New Orleans area guys, but obviously Anderson's the one who's older and will be playing a little bit more. Um, I'll, just, I, I'll just use America is on uh, Hulu, right? Uh, maybe on Amazon, I thought. I'm, oh, Amazon? Okay. Let's look real quick before I uh, I tell I say that, and then y'all go looking, and then I was wrong. Hulu. Nope. Y'all listen to Maddie B. I watch the most TV, but Maddie B still. I, I haven't even watched it. <laughs> and you could, I, I watch too much, so I can't even keep up with what uh, platform okay, I'm on. If only yeah. somebody invented something where uh, everything was on one thing mm. uh, and not a million platforms, they'd be rich. Throwback to cable there. Let's see where we're at. Bayou Tiger 22 didn't read everyone else's questions. <laughs> yeah, neither did I. Uh, what do you think is causing us not to get the quarterback? Defensive line is supposed to be a strength, but it looks average. We've talked about it. Yeah. Let's toss these games out. Florida State, you were just up against it. They've got a quarterback who evaded pressure well, and Grambling was not going to fall victim to that. They at least wanted to play the quick passing game and run the football. So. Not too worried about that yet. I want to see what happens after a couple more games. Uh, with the game being against Grambling State, it's hard to put a lot of stock into it, but it does seem a lot of the second string players are better than current starters. Why do you assume Kelly continues to use the same folks when they don't produce? I would guess that the second team players are not better than the starters, or they would be starters. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, it goes back to my rant. I just think people like d- trying to fix things whenever they see after a loss, it's like, let's fix this. How do we fix this? Let's put in a freshman. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there are some positions where we could see people like no. Swinson might play more than a go foo in different sure. spots or whatever, For but sure. I don't think that there's anybody that's like an egregious, I cannot believe that guy starts and this guy doesn't right now. Yeah. Uh, and if, and if it is, it's because a guy like Zalon turns a true freshman and you don't want to start out true freshman against Florida state, but you'll work him in from there. Uh, yeah. Puddle Ninja, play calling looks repetitive. Is that how Denbrock runs his offense, or is it a lack of execution by plays? Brian Kelly gave a little brag. He said, hey, we were running more run plays this week, different style of run okay. plays. I'm – look, I'll let you take this for us. I'm not beefing on Denbrock at all. They've got to yeah. execute. Catch the football. Like, yeah. make the throw. Hit the hole. Block it. Like, there's a million things you can do before you're like, oh, we should scrap the coordinator. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, I they, they couldn't block Florida State. Like, there's a lot, there was a lot that was wrong. If you could just look at the Florida State game, um, yeah, couldn't block, couldn't catch. There's <laughs> just not a, not a lot going right there. So, if you can't do that, I don't care what plays you're calling. You could have, I know everybody was all enamored by a, a few coordinators throughout the country, but ultimately, you can't gimmick your way to having a good football team or good offense. They asked if the defense is fixable with the recruiting class. If we hit must-have recruits, I think that's why you have the portal, which that's on the coaches. If they can go through a season and identify issues, spots that they don't have depth on, and you didn't fix it in high school recruiting, you got to fix it through the portal. Florida State did an excellent job of that this year. So I do think now that you have two avenues to address your football deficiencies, high school and the portal, there is – no reason anything on your team that is deemed needing fixed isn't in an off season. And if it's not to me, that's on a coaching staff. That's not on players. Uh, do our cornerbacks look worse due to lack of rush? He asked about hurting the quarterback, but we've already talked about that. Yeah. I think the cornerbacks look, I guess, worse compared to when, I guess if it's a year ago, I don't think the corners are as good as they had a year ago. And if it's before that, they are definitely are not as good as they had. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not trying all to gonna, match on it. I'm just being real. Like, no, I agree. It's it's all going to work in conjunction. They're going to have to figure out pass rush. They have to figure out coverage. 
this week is a big week, like I said, and then Arkansas is a big week because you have KJ Jefferson. So, you know, a couple big weeks in a row here to figure it out. Uh, CB Tigers, and this is where Matty B comes in and tells everyone to stop asking multiple questions. So now we're about to really roll through the podcast and almost be done here. Uh, CB Tigers 24, has Denver played good enough to start over Deuce Chestnut? Yes. Deuce yeah. only played one snap against Grambling State, and he came in because Denver's helmet came off. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think Denver's is, is over Deuce right now. That should be the answer. RHCP 1993, where's the production from Quincy Wiggins? I'm not ready to say anything about Quincy's future. I'm just going to remind people that he started football later. He was, we knew that he was raw coming out of high school. The fact that one year and two games in that he's like not starting or the primary backup at their most crowded position yeah. on the defensive line or in the front seven really is not a shock to me or a knock on him. So no, it's I, not. Uh, I don't, I'm okay with Quincy Wiggins. There's, we, he's got so much time left. Uh, five for five with LSU's defense being so rough on the back end. Is it shocking that Tobiano isn't getting more of a look? I don't think so because he plays safety and their three safeties are all like fifth year seniors. So, yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't, I think maybe nickel on occasion. But yeah. They're even in Major Burns has a bad game like he did tackling. They're not taking him off the field. That no. just is the reality of it. So, Andre Sam, Greg Brooks, Major Burns are going to play before a guy like that. Uh, Bam Osby, are the DBs capable of playing press or seven to eight yards off? Um, Brian Kelly addressed that. He said, we're not, we run a lot of different corner yeah. looks. We're not a press man team. Um, yeah. There are a variety of things. So they are capable. They just don't do a lot of it. Um, he asked about pressure on the quarterback. We talked about that. Um, number three, it just says FSU or Texas. I'm assuming who is these things better? Yeah. FSU. Uh, Florida State. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, Bam apologized because he immediately asked multiple questions after Matthew <laughs> told him not to ask multiple questions. So shout out, Bam. He's playing by the rules here. Uh, three more. Dumb brain picks. As it's more comfortable in the system, does do we see more design pass plays for him? Feels like he could be effective in a similar role to how Colorado uses Dylan Edwards out of the backfield. Dylan Edwards is one of the fastest kids in the country. Yeah, he's not as fast. Uh, as this is, I could see Diggs, Diggs caught a lot of balls at Notre Dame. It's that the wheel routes, the dump offs, and that was stuff primarily where John Emery stepped in for him a year ago. Yeah, but at the same time, everyone's going to get mad if he throws that because Daniel Daniel should only be throwing balls twenty five yards down the field. So there you go. Maddie we'll B's see. getting when when we hit an hour on the podcast, Maddie B gets real spicy. <laughs> uh, Mike, I'm tired. Is, but yes, to answer the question, I do think Diggs will be involved in the pass game. He's played yes. one game. He already caught a ball for eighteen yards. You're going to get yes. more involved. Yeah. Mike to Tiger 10 tackling. It's been a bad along with taking angles uh, and breaking down the tackle. Do we tackle live during fall camp? I saw, yes. I mean, 11 on 11. Yeah. Were, right. Yeah. Like not during one on ones or but no. yeah, during 11 on 11, they tackled. I mean, yeah. they, they weren't doing the Oklahoma drill out there. Like, but yeah, they no. They, um, but Tackling is an issue that has to be fixed. These kids have tackled all their life. And that's another thing in evals. Like they watch a lot of kids on film and especially in the defensive backfield where these kids could be long as hell. They can run a 10, six and all that. And I don't know how many times they'll be like, well, why didn't you offer? And they'd be like, he can't tackle. So that is already something they try to weed through like a natural attacker tackler to even get you out there. And then if you're struggling from there, it's something that's just got to be cleaned up. So like, Major Burns is too good and too experienced to be having games like he did, taking a bad angle or making missing tackles. So he'll be better. Guys will be better. This is something we talk about every single year at the start of the season is poor tackling. Um, and that's not just LSU. Even teams that are winning are not yep. just flawless in tackling. So that's something that they'll continue to get better at, I think, as guys get settled in. Kenny Mack, 409, has got the honor of being our last question on the podcast. And he didn't even watch the game, which is great. Which is a <laughs> fitting way to end this pot, this podcast, which we've been all over. The place oh, he with. said again. He said again. He said again. So you probably watched it live. Oh, oh, I did not watch the game again yet. Oh, my bad, Kenny Mac. I just thought he was coming in hot there. Would look, I haven't watched anything. <laughs> yeah, again. I would respect it. Then he asked, "Did some people play? Did Jeremiah Hughes? These are all true freshmen. Jeremiah Hughes, who's a corner. Um, Jalen Brown, who is a wide receiver. Trey Holly, who's a running back, and Dylan Carpenter is an edge play. The answer to all four is no. So I there looked it were... up. Say it again. I looked it up. Um, I think Hughes got in on special teams. Oh, Hughes did play. Uh, Hughes had 
I'll give you the snap count, but I'm sorry yeah. about that. Uh, the others did not. Um, no. The other I three did not at all. My, so I, my freshman and, report. Oh, yeah, you, you did the freshman. Uh, you should know this. Five snaps. There you go. Five snaps. Uh, just so people know, the people did not play. Kylan Jackson, he's been hurt. Uh, Braithwaite did not play at linebacker. Carpenter did not play at edge. Tyree Adams and Paul Mabanga on the offensive line did not play. Kai Prion and Jalen Brown at receiver didn't play. And Trey Holly at running back didn't play. All of the 16 other signees that are true freshmen played. And Ryan Robinson played a lot. He's a preferred walk-on, but he also did get nearly 20 snaps in the game. Yeah, shout out Ryan Robinson. There um, you go. That'll do it, Matty B. That'll do it. That'll do it. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Um, our minute, our podcast, but people li- like our long podcast. They just turn them on to work. Mailbag is always the longest. They just let us talk. They just let us talk while they work or do whatever else uh, they're doing. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for submitting any questions. If you haven't subscribed to the Bengal Tire, you can send your questions in. You get all of the subscriber access to our stories, to our inside scoops, basketball, football, Everything you want to know is on there. So subscribe to the Bengal Tiger if you haven't already. Um, shout out to Bird Dogs, our sponsor for the podcast. Um, and yeah, thank you to Shay for reading all those questions. So uh, until even when I misread them, sorry. Even when you misread them, Shay and Billy will be back with the recruiting podcast on Tuesday. Um, I'm gonna try to get, get a Mississippi State guy on for Wednesday, um, and then after that we'll have our preview. So there's the schedule for the week. Um, until then, we will talk to y'all later.